Yes, like I told you, uh, I'm going to, to tell you something about um, the current labor market because we live in strange times right now with the corona uh, and it has an impact on the labor market. So I will get, uh, I, will, I will give you some information about that, but mainly I will give you some practical tips and advices what you can do during these times. Um, but first, in short, some uh, figures. What is the expected impact on the labor market of this corona crisis? Well, we are expecting an overall decrease in vacancies of about 20 to 30 percent. Um, the severity of the recession depends on the duration of the contact restrictions. Uh, luckily, right now in the Netherlands, the restrictions are uh, yeah, much less than before. So hopefully uh, the, the impact of this, the recession will be limited, but in other countries uh, it still continues. So we don't know yet what the total impact will be. And what is also, um, uh, the impact is also different in, in the diverse industries. Some industries uh, um, are really um, uh, low in, in, uh, in business, others are flourishing. So maybe the next slide, team, you can show. I will show you uh, some um, differences in, in industries. Okay. Well, this is the impact per industry uh, specifically, and uh, it's, it will be no uh, a secret that some uh, industries have more difficulties than the other ones, uh, like in culture and sports and recreation, like events, uh, aviation, there is a very high shrinkage. Uh, whereas in the health and welfare services, public administration and postal and courier services, there's an expected growth. So uh, there's a lot of difference within the industries, but this gives you a short uh, impression of what industries uh, yeah, are expected to, sh to shrink or already have shrunken uh, and what industries are expected to grow. Um, if there are any questions about this, please ask in the chat, but this uh, is what I would, wanted to share with you about uh, the impact per industry. And I will continue with some useful tips for you because it will be no secret that this uh, corona crisis will have an impact on, uh, on the labor market. But I think there are still some things that you can, it's not uh, like depressive story I want to share with you because I think there are a lot of, still a lot of opportunities. As I showed you, there are some industries that are growing and hopefully now that the crisis is, is um, slowing down, that the, the impact will be less and uh, vacancies and internship opportunities will grow again. So my first message to you is stay positive. Don't let Corona scare you. Keep going because there are opportunities. And another thing you can do is create an attractive and professional profile. You have more time, I think, right now to uh, really focus on that. So make a good CV and a LinkedIn profile and write a motivation letter, a standard motivation letter, which you can adjust when you apply for a vacancy. And you can also prepare for online job interviews because we see a shift that, uh, and maybe for the future this will continue, that more job interviews are done online instead of offline. So be prepared and, and just practice those. And another important uh, tip I have for you, build your own uh, online network. Maybe you, you've heard it in the breakout sessions, but right now, because everything is online, uh, uh, building your network is crucial. I also put a, a link in the presentation. You will all receive this presentation afterwards uh, with more tips. It's an article on LinkedIn with more tips what you can do during this corona time. So just check it in your free time. Um, just to go a little bit more deeper into the tips I just gave you, what can you actually do? Uh, and I will not uh, read everything because you can see, look it up later, but I will point out some, uh, some things. An attractive professional CV. How does an attractive professional CV look like when you want to apply for a job in the Netherlands? Uh, well, first, don't make it too long. Uh, preferably one page, but a maximum of, of two pages. Um, another thing what is very important is to put a personal profile on your CV. That's a, a part on top of your CV because a recruiter mostly uh, takes seven to nine seconds to, to look at a CV and uh, when you have a personal profile which really stands out, 
then they get interested and they want to learn more about you and they will look into your CV further. So make sure you have a personal profile in your CV in which you describe who you are, what your competences are, uh, what is your added value, um, and what are you looking for. Um, another thing that's important, make scannable lists and use uh, the docs. So don't make long stories on your CV because a recruiter won't read it. Just keep it short and use bullets. And make it anti-chronological. So start with your last education and your last work experience instead of the other way around. Uh, then the other uh, tip I gave you is make an attractive and professional LinkedIn profile. Like I said, everything is, is done online, so it's um, not easy to network offline at this moment, um, but it's, it's possible to network online and LinkedIn is a perfect uh, medium to do so. So make sure you have a professional LinkedIn profile. Uh, and what does that look like? Well, the, the first one, of course, uh, make sure you have a professional profile picture and a background picture. But what is very important, make sure you have a strong headline. When you're available for a job or an internship, put it in your headline and use the word available because recruiters look for the word available when they're looking for uh, new employees. So make sure you have a strong headline in which you say uh, who you are. So you're maybe like a student. Uh, but you're also available for a job as or an internship as. Um, also here, very important, like on your CV, make sure you have a profile, a personal profile, and it's called summary on your uh, LinkedIn profile, where you write who you are and what you bring to a company and what you're looking for. Um, because that's also what recruiters, they, they scan your uh, LinkedIn and that's what they read. And if it's interesting, they will read more of you, your uh, profile, so make sure that's on there. Then, uh, like I said, a professional motivation letter. Um, you can make a, um, a basic motivation letter, but it's very important that you adjust it when you apply for a vacancy because you have to use the, the things they ask in the vacancy in your motivation letter. So make sure that uh, the basis you, you make for the letter is adjusted to the vacancy you're applying to. Uh, and this is the, the, yeah, the actions of the, the lines you should put in your letter. First of all, start with an introduction in which you say where you found the vacancy and then give a motivation why you applied and what you like about the organization and the job you're applying for. Then, uh, Make, sh make sure you tell them why you are the most suitable candidate for the job and uh, make sure that you tell them what your unique selling points are. And uh, very important, make a, a sentence, close your letter with a sentence you, you call for a call of action, where you say that you, you would like to, to motivate your uh, application in person. So you could do that during these Corona times, okay. Uh, tips for online job interviews. Like I told you, uh, nowadays most job interviews are done online. The first, uh, the first job interview at least. So practice uh, beforehand and make sure uh, that your connection is good. So practice with someone familiar and make sure your, your light is good and your sound is good and the position of your camera is on eye level and Make sure that you look into the camera and hope I'm looking in, into the camera right now as well. Uh, make sure you have a neutral background. Sorry, I don't have a neutral background at this moment. Uh, but for a job interview, it's very important. Use professional clothing. Use hand gestures to uh, emphasize what you're saying. Sit up straight and smile and show your en enthusiasm. And uh, another thing that's important, prepare some questions in advance. So you can also ask the company uh, some questions. And here are some examples. I won't go uh, through them, but here are some examples you can uh, expect, you can prepare for, and you can expect in the job interview. Um, and the first one is the most important one. So prepare, always prepare for that questions because they are going to ask you, tell me something about yourself. And then you have to pitch yourself in like a minute two minutes. So that's one of the most important questions to prepare yourself for. Uh, and also make sure that you prepare some smart examples so you can use them to validate your story. 
um, because uh, otherwise when you say you're flexible that doesn't mean anything if you can't uh, give an example that shows that you're flexible um, one of the last slides build on your online network very important in these days uh, make sure that you you have a linkedin profile and that you connect with the right people um, also attend virtual career events online coffee dates and in-house days there are a lot of events you can attend um, to to uh, network online join webinars and workshops in your field of interest and a uh, very important contact and talk to alumni and recruiters online uh, people in your target job just connect with them on LinkedIn and ask them if they can help you or get, get you in contact with someone within the company who's hiring the people. So make sure that you're um, really active on LinkedIn and people like to help others so feel free to ask. Um, and then some tips especially for you guys, you international students. Um, focus on international company, companies in the Netherlands. They are mainly located in Eindhoven, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, The Hague and Utrecht. It's called the Randstad. Uh, learn how to speak Dutch, especially for informal talks with colleagues around the coffee. Um, it, it really makes a difference if you learn the language. Build a network in the Netherlands for information, activities and alumni experience. And a good example is Holland Alumni Network. I also put the link in for you. Uh, I know the legislation around uh, the search and orientation year uh, for non-EU citizens because you have the possibility to, to have a year to uh, stay in the Netherlands without working and, and looking for a job. So you have that opportunity. If you want to know more about that, you can find it on the site. I put it in. Okay. Then I have the last slide. Uh, in the beginning of this event, we already told you about it. Maria, uh, our alum, alumna who is present today, is organizing a, a Here to Start event on the 1st and 2nd of July, uh, where you can follow live webinars, Q&A and workshop, uh, workshops. And it's uh, dedicated to all international entrepreneurs ready to get their business started in the Netherlands. So if you are interested, I would say sign in for it. And if you have any more questions uh, about uh, career orientation or preparation, or if you just want someone to brainstorm with, you can also always contact Student Career Services of Tilburg University. And here I'll put the, the uh, yeah, how you can, can get in touch with us. So, uh, yeah, that was my story I would like to share with you. I don't know if I'm within time. <laughs> But I hope I did it in 10 minutes. Uh, but thank you for your attention. And I'm going to introduce the next speaker. I, I see she's already uh, here. Uh, I will give the floor to Floor Nobles. Uh, she is a recruitment innovator. And she will tell you more about her experience as a recruiter in the current labor market. So Floor, the floor is yours. Yeah, is this working? Yeah, very good. Okay, great, great. Hi, my name is Floor Nobles. I'm a recruitment professional innovator. I like to call myself to, to stand a little bit out of the crowd. Um, I've been working and studying abroad too. So I uh, lived uh, for a couple of years in Denmark and I lived in China and I've been working remote for more than 10 years. So this whole crisis is, is for me, well, yeah, it's a crisis, but it's still not new. To, to work completely online. Um, so I would like to share my experience of being a headhunter, working for great companies like uh, EY, Microsoft, or Nexu, and give you some tips. Joyce already mentioned some things in her presentation, so I will skip. Well, these were my t tips for your online interview to make that a success. Um, let's see what Joyce missed that I can add. Make sure you have your dog outside, your kid outside, your partner, and don't wear a bikini unless it's 34 degrees. Uh, oh, what really helps is to put an eye catcher uh, uh, or a conversation starter in your background, so like a surfboard or a great plant or whatever, so you have something to talk about uh, because you will miss to get the cup of coffee for a little small talk. I think the rest Joyce already mentioned. 
Um, I, we ask you uh, for some questions, uh, what you would like to, to know. And one of it was, um, what do I need to make my online interview a success? Well, my first tip is always be prepared. Uh, but prepare yourself for these three questions. Um, that is why you want to work for this company, why you want to land in this job, and why they should hire you. And you can use these questions also for writing your motivational letter or adjusting your resume to make it fit for that job. So always keep these three questions in mind. Why this company? Why this job? Why you? Uh, I think Joyce also mentioned this, but there are still yeah, uh, booming industries. So I call it the COVID-19 proof industries like IT, education, healthcare, um, energy transition. These are industries that are not affected at all, I think. Um, and, and now that we have the uh, restrictions lifted, I, yeah, th these industries are, are, are looking for, for people over and over again. Okay, and now I would like to go through a couple of questions that uh, also popped up uh, and maybe we have some time left for other questions. Um, the question was, what is the first step you can take as an international student to find a job in the Netherlands? Um, well, I would always start with your friends. Ask your friends. I don't know if you all are aware of Sinterklaas. Uh, that's like our Dutch version of Santa Claus. If you don't ask for a present, you don't get it. So if you don't just ask for the job you're looking for. Hey, I'm open for a developer job. Hey, I'm looking for a marketing job. Um, I'm looking for a whatever job. Ask your friends and ask the friends of your friends. So try to get referrals. Um, Joyce also mentioned uh, uh, build your online network. LinkedIn is the most important one I would say. So also you can post what you're looking for on your LinkedIn and see who responds and also actively uh, approach people um, who you think might be valuable to land in that, that job or that company. Um, and there are a lot of expatriate groups, for example, on Facebook or meetups. Um, yeah, look them up. Uh, so when you're Japanese, look for the Japanese in the Netherlands or the the, the Asians in, in, in the Netherlands and, and just find your way via these people who already have a job and maybe know what uh, kind of vacancies they have at their company. So that would be my, um, my most um, uh, important tip. Uh, and also one other tip is don't make applying a full day job. Just do like three or five things a day, do them good and then enjoy life. But don't scroll over and over again on your LinkedIn. You get depressed. Just make a good action plan and do yeah, like the five things a day to land in a job. Is someone moderating? If there are any questions, you can post them, I think, in the chat. Yeah, I will. Uh, if there are questions, I will uh, announce them. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's important in positioning yourself on the Dutch labor market? Um, yeah, I would say, yeah, create a good resume like Joyce did and create that LinkedIn profile um, and make sure you make it very tangible, very concrete and limit yourself to two pages uh, and to a very, if you do like the online uh, LinkedIn profile, make sure to have like a catchy headline, a good picture and uh, make you stand out of the crowd. This question came up quite a few times. Do I need to learn Dutch? Um, well, I only have one answer to that. I would say yes, yes, you're in the Netherlands. So I know it will take some time uh, and not all will become um, um, near native speakers, but it will always help you to land a job. And every international company I work for is looking for people who show that they have learning abilities and also dive into a language. So I would always recommend you to learn Dutch so you can maybe order a beer in Dutch or have a little small talk. Um, but it really is important to show that you want to stay here for a longer time. So my question is yes. And 
I see a lot of people who speak just a little Dutch and in their professional um, uh, environment, they speak English. But um, yeah, you have to start somewhere. If I, if I meet people that have been working for, uh, for 15 years in the Netherlands and they don't know any word of Dutch, I, I think that is a disqualifier. So well, keep that in mind. Or maybe I'm too strict. Um, my last tip is what, or what, as I had it, or what can I share with you that is really important? I would say that you really have to get to know yourself. What are your strengths? What are your skills? And look for a job that fits that, that, that makes your heart tick. Um, I see a lot of people just starting jobs and then they realize mm, maybe this is it, it. Of course you are allowed to make a, a, a fault or a, uh, sometimes it's a job is not what, what's expected, but it's really good to know yourself and to know in what environment, in what kind of job you will be successful. It's good for your self-esteem, it makes you happy, you get things done. So know yourself before applying and don't apply on everything but try to yeah to pick what really matches uh, you this is a, a market where yeah you have a lot of competition so um if there are people that match the criteria better then the company will often choose choose that one so make sure you and the job match and the other way around the job matches you well these were the most ask questions maybe you have another question for me if we have time left any questions i don't think there are specific questions floor i think there are a lot of uh, uh, remarks in the chat but it's more tips uh, that people give each other where to learn dutch so that's oh but uh, I don't think there are specific questions for you or for me. So one last one is coming in. Maybe, oh, uh, yeah. Um, how close should be my should my profile be to the description, the job description? Yeah, I think you should make like it should be honest. So yeah, be honest. I think as a starter, it's really important to show that you are a quick learner. So you can also say, um, I have limited, uh, for example, uh, marketing experience, but I always do the marketing for my, uh, my father who has his own grocery shop or whatever. Um, so um, yeah, be honest, tell them where you are able to learn. Um, and yeah, look for the skills that match that job requirement. For example, marketing, if you studied communication, then communication and marketing are quite close to each other. So you can say, hey, I'm really good in writing or writing or creating catchy headlines. So I think I can do the, this marketing job. Um, yeah, but we, be the real you. I think that's important. Shall I? I was thinking whether Joyce would pick up the next question, but I will do it. Um, so there's a, another question. Um, a few times it has been mentioned to have a banner on your LinkedIn. How crucial is it? And as a student, what would you recommend it to be? Um, yeah, I do like it when people put a little attention to their personal branding, I would say. Like for your resume, your link profile, try to look for a good picture. You don't have to be... Uh, Mrs. Universe or Miss Universe, but just yeah, uh, show the best version of yourself. And I think the header is fun to yeah to to emphasize a little bit of yourself. For if you have a look at my own LinkedIn profile, I used to live in China and I took a picture in the subway and I just thought it was a really fun picture with all these people around me. Now in COVID times, it's a bit uh, <laughs> it's 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 uh, how you say it. Uh, this is a, an image from the past, I would say. Uh, but it's to show my background. So yes, it's nice to 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 uh, to choose something that 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 matches your style. Yeah, make it personal. I think make it personal. Yeah, yeah I great. also saw one data analyst. I I know he data is power. He just had a, a quote like that. I I like that. Yeah. Um, great. I we have another question coming in. Um, Malika is saying, I lack local networking uh, community to look for jobs. As a Canadian, I'm used to a more formal approach of applying through career portals. 
how important is it for me right now to develop connections or do I have a chance of landing a job formally? Uh, I think connections are always important. So uh, focus on both. Um, uh, maybe you don't have enough connections. So then the, the, the official route uh, via career pages is, is the most logical. But at the other hand, I know that a lot of people get their, their job via via. So I would always work on both. And you can also, if you, for example, you see a job at, uh, uh, at, 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 at Nextview, where the, the company I work for right now, you can check their website and then you can just switch to LinkedIn and see who is working there, what kind of people are that. And maybe you can just yeah, connect with someone and say, hey, I see you work as a developer. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about, uh, about your job, about your company? I'm, I want to apply. Most people really are very helpful to help there. And, and, and to add something, I think when you, when you want to work in the Netherlands, then it's crucial that you start also uh, the networking uh, online through LinkedIn. Um, because like 70% of all jobs are found by uh, networking in the Netherlands. So that's a difference, maybe a different than in Canada. Ca Canada, so <laughs> Canada, I mean. Uh, so I really rec recommend that you start networking online. Maybe we finish with a last question from Gabriella um, concerning the time. I think we have to round it up sometime. Mm -hmm. uh, so a last question for you, uh, Floor. As a recruiter, do you think uh, experience in another country is valuable here? So I have uh, more than seven years of working experience in Brazil. Um, or as an expert, do I need to apply for a startup position? Uh, no, I, I, do, I do like it when people have uh, experience abroad it always it, it tells me a lot about the person so it doesn't only tell me that you maybe know some Portuguese you maybe know some of the culture of Bra Brazil uh, but you are also uh, uh, capable of, of, of um, how do you say it uh, staying alive in a foreign country a lot of people just don't take that step so you're an adventure adventurous person and you really succeeded in establishing a life there if you stay there for for seven years so respect to that so um, it always helps to show that you've done things like that even uh, world uh, travel trips or uh, volunteer work uh, uh, at the kibbutz is always it's always good to mention because again you you deal with people and Maybe I lived in Brazil or my best friend is Brazilian and I've been to that country three times. And if you mention that on your resume, then we have like a first connection. And, 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 and again, that can be an icebreaker. Uh, so um, it's always worth the mention, even if it doesn't relate to the job you're applying for. And if you're applying for a job where, for example, they need like really a self-starter, you can use your you're uh, living abroad as an example look how i yeah just moved 5000 kilometers from home and built a new life and 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 graduated uh, so yeah if you have it flaunt it i would say okay well thank you very much flor for your uh, participation in this event thank you welcome um, i'm going to the finish of this event um so we are, uh, uh, I have some last words I would like to share with you. Uh, first of all, connect with the alumni you spoke today to get additional information. Uh, Tilburg University also offers a mentor program. So you can get in touch with alumni who can be your mentor for a given period of time. If uh, you are interested, you can contact the career service officer of your school. Uh, so that's the tip I would like to give to you. Uh, as already mentioned, uh, the Here to Start event on the 1st and the 2nd of July. So if you're interested, please check the website and subscribe. Um, and last but not least, uh, I, we, I would like to ask you to fill in our survey in the next five minutes. Uh, it's a, a QR code. So when you just scan it with your uh, telephone, you uh, can fill it in. And it really helps us for our next event we are planning to organize at the end of this year. So I would really appreciate it if you could fill it in right now. Uh, and we uh, can use your feedback to optimize the next event. Uh, um, 
Thank you very much again for attending this event. Thank you very much, Flora, and thank you very much to our alumni who shared their stories, valuable stories with you. Um, yeah, so uh, thank you very much for being here. Um, and uh, thanks already for filling in the, the survey. And have a nice evening. Thank you, guys.